everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, my name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and a former professional MCAT tutor and I run this channel and this business with my brother, John. Usually we make very like, specific MCAT focused uh, content, but today I thought, you know what? These people aren't just taking the MCAT. They're also pre-med and they're wondering about things related to medical school in general. So I wanted to make a video on something I wish I knew when I still had time in undergrad that would have helped me for medical school. And that is what classes are even worth it. So if you still have the opportunity to take some undergrad classes or to pick your schedule for your fourth year of undergrad or whatever, and you wanna pick something that's relevant for medical school and that will actually help you, that's what this video is for. Now, for those of you out there who are wondering what you need to take for the MCAT specifically, or just for like prereqs for med school, what was required for the medical schools that I applied to was like, bio one and two, general chemistry one and two, organic chemistry one and two, biochemistry. There's like so much chemistry. I feel like it's like too much. Physics one and two, that could either be trigonometry based or calculus based. And then you have to do obviously like your general, like your maths and Englishes and stuff that you pretty much just have to do to get like any of like a degree. Now, as a disclaimer, I was a psychology major in undergrad, so I took a lot of extra like psychology classes. And I think that even you have to take at least like intro to psych to apply to medical school. And I think that of the like, you know, dozen psychology classes that I took in undergrad, I think that there were two that were really, really helpful for me actually going through the first two years of medical school. One was abnormal psychology. Your school might call it something different, but basically this was like the class that went over different kind of psychological pathologies, mental illnesses, stuff like that. And it was, it was like very helpful for the psychology portion of my first two like didactic years in medical school. Having said that, that portion of at least my medical school curriculum was only a couple weeks long and it was lumped into the larger neurosciences course. So like, did it boost my grade a whole, whole lot? Maybe not, but it just gave me a little bit of a breather when we were coming across material that I already had in my back pocket from undergrad. So I liked that class. I'm not saying I recommend it to everybody, but for those psychology majors out there or other people who are just looking for maybe a, a kind of a fun elective, if you have the option to take that, might be a good one. The next class that I took uh, for my psychology curriculum that I thought was really helpful was a research methods class. This class was painful to get through because basically it just taught us how to like read, interpret, and write research. And that's not the most fun thing that I did in undergrad. However, it has been like so helpful. In medical school, a lot of people end up doing research. I'm doing research, John's doing research, and having some literacy and how to read and write good manuscripts is like incredibly helpful. So if you have the option to take, you know, a stats class or a research class or something else, maybe choose the stats or the research class because it'll actually really help you down the road in medical school. The next class that I took that I thought was really helpful was not part of my psychology curriculum. I took anatomy. And I feel like this is kind of a, a debate. It's like, should you take anatomy or not? Like, is it required? Is, I, don't, I don't think it's required for any medical school and they're going to teach you anatomy when you get to medical school anyway. But for me, anatomy was something that's really tough because it is just rote memorization. So having taken it in undergrad and been able to like recall some of those things from undergrad was super helpful. And so, you know, if you have time in your schedule, think about taking it. It was a fun class too. I know at my college, we actually had um, like real life donors or cadavers and that was a really special experience too. And it's, it, it helped a lot when I got to medical school and was exposed to that. I kind of knew what to do a little bit. So those are classes I took that I felt like were really helpful. Now there's some classes that I think that would have been really helpful, but I didn't take. The first one is like something I'm like punching the air all the time, but I did not take microbiology in undergrad. I suck at microbiology and it is so important for medical school not even just medical school but like clinical medicine like I'm coming across these bacteria all the time in blood cultures wound cultures whatever and I'm always getting asked by attendings like oh what's you know it's a gram-negative rod like what could that be and I'm like like you have microbiology in medical school and you go through it in like every block but it honestly is one of those things that it's it's kind of like anatomy it's sort of just rote memorization like I don't remember if C. diff is 
gram negative or gram positive. Like I'm having to like continuously reteach myself these things and it, it ends up being really important when you go on, you learn about like antibiotics because these antibiotics are all only effective for certain kinds of bacteria and it'd be really nice to know, okay, if I have this certain kind of bacteria and I know that this antibiotic covers gram positive cocci, that matches. You know, it, I just, I really wish I would have taken microbiology in undergrad. The next one that I didn't take, I did not take any immunology classes in undergrad. And I'm pretty sure that there's some colleges that like don't have immunology programs. Like the college I went to actually had a whole immunology major. And one of my good friends was an immunology major. And he's like, a whiz kid now and when i came into medical school i was the first time i'd ever even like heard of the word cytokine and so it just it would have been really helpful to kind of know a little bit more about immunology going into medical school so if you have that option i think about taking it that's another one of those things that's like really clinically relevant too especially with all the new biologic medications and everything that are coming out a lot of them like relate back to like interleukins and, and stuff like that so immunology could be key. Another thing that a lot of students uh, took advantage of was uh, neuroscience courses in undergrad. I know that at the college I went to, like neuroscience was a huge major and a lot of students that were neuroscience majors kind of shuttled into medical school. I don't know, this may be a hot take. I don't know how well those neuroscience courses really translated to medical school. They probably did and they really helped for like the neuroscience portion of my medical school, but at the same time, it's not like microbiology or immunology in that those kind of domains span across every organ system. Neuroscience is obviously very focused on neuroscience and it's kind of like the psychology class I was talking about before. It's very focused on like just that psychiatry portion of medical school. And so did those people probably perform very well in the neuroscience block? Yeah, they probably did, but it doesn't really translate to like the cardiovascular block, the gastrointestinal block, stuff like that. So if you're passionate about neuroscience, you wanna be that neurologist, neurosurgeon, whatever, sure, go ahead and take those neuroscience classes. But I think that something like microbiology, immunology, anatomy is probably going to help across all of medical school better. Now the key question for this channel is, do any of those help with the MCAT? I think that the knowledge base that you need for the MCAT is in all of your medical school prerequisite courses. And that's how it's supposed to be. I think that if you excelled in your organic chemistries and your general chemistries and your biologies, that is sufficient to do well on the MCAT. All those like, you know, Yes, the immune system type stuff is on the MCAT, but it is a very like brief overview of the immune system. You don't have to get an immunology major to understand the immune system questions on the MCAT is what I'm trying to say. And the same for like, like there's no anatomy on the MCAT, like ba barely at all. And I don't think there's like hardly any microbiology. You don't have to know gram negative, gram positive, anything like that. They may talk about it in passages, but you don't have to actually know it to answer questions. So I've been rambling for a while. And I guess to wrap it all up, yes, you have to take your biologies, your chemistries, your physics to even apply to medical school and to take the MCAT. And those are all really helpful. And some things that I either took or wish I really wish I would have taken before medical school, probably the top, like the heavy hitters are microbiology, anatomy, some sort of immunology class. And if you have the chance to take like a research class, research literacy, something like that, that's really helpful kind of for medical school, like grades wise, but also for like the research you get into once you get into medical school or that you may already be doing. But all right guys, short video today, but I hope that it was helpful. Sometimes me and John like to do videos that are sort of adjacent to the MCAT and more, more relevant for like pre-med students and stuff like that or even people in medical school. So let us know if you like this kind of content or want to see more of it. Hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.